Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's a really special day because it's actually my three year anniversary on YouTube, which really is insane to think about because it feels like it's been like one day. I feel like this is my first day. But in reality, I've grown so much just as a person since I started my YouTube channel and I could not have imagined the life that I have now when I first started three years ago. So three years in, I thought I would finally do a tattoo tour. This is easily my most requested video and I haven't done it yet, not because I don't want to, but because every time I think about filming this, I always have like future tattoo appointments. And then I think like, oh, when I get that tattoo, I'll film this video. And then it's just like this never ending cycle. So I decided I'm just gonna sit down today, no matter what, and film this tattoo tour and talk about some of the ebbs and flows of my tattoo journey, because it's definitely been a roller coaster, to say the least. So today's video is gonna be a bit more relaxed. I don't have a script. We're just gonna hang out and talk about my tattoo journey. Grab a snack, I have a snack. It is, I don't remember what they're called, but Trader Joe's has these little like berry chocolate covered things. They're really good. So let's get right into it. So growing up, I was the weird emo kid. I'm pretty sure that that will surprise absolutely no one. Like 50% of my hair was my bangs. I don't really remember the exact moment that I was like in love with tattoos. I just remember from a very young age, I was like, I'm getting tattooed when I'm older and I'm gonna be covered in tattoos. This was just like my vision for some reason. So on my 18th birthday, I begged my parents to take me to get a tattoo. I had been living in China at this point for probably seven, maybe eight years. And I decided to go with this phrase. So it is Bu Hong Dong Han Na Zhe Chun Wan. And what that translates to is without winter, you can't appreciate spring. I have a video kind of about this Chinese tattoo. I will have it linked now. There's actually a slight error in it, but that's okay doesn't really bother me. And I got this tattoo with my twin brother, Devin. We both turned 18 at the same time. Devin added the international diabetes symbol to the bottom of his. I think it's like a blue circle. And he did this because this is a memorial tattoo for our older brother, Shane. So we got this tattoo in honor of him. And it, it genuinely still is a really special tattoo to me. I'm really happy I have it. And I am glad that I started off my tattoo journey with something that is really close to my heart. Maybe it was the adrenaline of this whole experience, but I don't remember this hurting at all. And a lot of people are like, they see my spine tattoo and they're like, damn, I bet that hurt. And I'm like, I, I don't even remember it hurting in the slightest bit. We also took tequila shots before. Maybe that played a factor in it. Shortly after that, I graduated high school and I moved back to the United States to go to college and I was living in Santa Cruz, California and I really don't remember putting a lot of thought into my next tattoo, which is my shoulder tattoo. And it's kind of crazy thinking back on some of these early tattoos and how little thought I put into them. It's not that they weren't special to me, but like I said, I was just like determined to be covered in tattoos. So it was like, I was just going to get them. At the time, there was this really cool American traditional tattoo shop that I heard about called O'Reilly's Tattoo Parlor in Santa Cruz. It's not a shop anymore, but I got this done by Jason Anderson, who now works at Fog City Tattoo. Great traditional artist. And I pretty much just came to him and I was like, I want three roses on my shoulder. And he was like, cool. And then we did it. And he was like, what color do you want? And I was like, I don't know, like red. And he was like, okay, cool. So I just need you all to know that I've always been the chillest client of all time. And I also barely remember this one hurting at all. But I remember I had my family visit me while I was getting this tattoo. And my mom was like, that's a big tattoo. I didn't know you were getting that. And I was like, oh, sorry. So yeah, but mostly I was just alone in the studio. And this is something that I love about my tattoo journey when I think back on it, is that I've just always loved tattoos and I've loved art and I've been so confident about getting tattooed that I would just go to these studios alone as like an 18, 19 year old and get a huge tattoo and just tell them to do whatever. I just really love that tattooing has always been like my own thing. Like it's literally just for me and it's just that I enjoy it so much. 
But let's get back to the story. This is where things kind of take a turn for the worst. There was a period of time between getting my shoulder piece and my next tattoo that I didn't get tattooed at all. And that's because I was a broke college student and I just could not afford it. But I eventually saved up a bunch of money and I found this very expensive tattoo artist in San Francisco. Now I do have a whole video on my sleeve story time that you can click and watch now if you want like a very detailed explanation of this. But I essentially went to a tattoo artist that I think I didn't really put enough effort into making sure he did the kind of tattoos that I wanted to. Like I said, I was in this mindset where I was like, I'm just gonna go get tattooed and the tattoo artist is gonna do what I want. And that had worked for me so far, but it didn't work out for me this time. So I got a phoenix on my arm and I immediately hated it. <laughs> I've searched and searched and searched and I have one photo of this tattoo before I got any laser on it. And you can kind of barely see the tattoo even in this photo because I would constantly try to hide it. I really did not like it at all. And I still have the body of this phoenix on my arm, but I decided to go through with removal sessions on the outer wing portion that you can see in this photo. And during the process of getting tattoo removal, I was like really, really, I was really sad because like I said, tattooing had been something that I was so confident about and so central to like who I was that now I was getting something removed. It was painful. It was expensive, really expensive. At this time I had a job, so I could pay for it. And this was just a difficult period of my life because I kind of fell out of love with tattoos. It just didn't feel good to me to be out of love with tattoos. So I ended up getting three laser removal sessions on my arm before I was like, okay, this is light enough to cover. And a lot of people hear that and they're shocked by the number of removal sessions I had. And I think getting removal back then was a lot different than getting removal today. Today, there's like those big laser removal clinics like Laser Away where people are getting like 10 sessions on their tattoos and they're not coming off. I don't know what they're doing at Laser Away. I just know that I wouldn't recommend anyone I know to go there. But I went to this random doctor in Santa Cruz who had a laser for something. I don't know. And he really lasered off this tattoo. It must have been at like the most extreme level. Because it was actually... And I didn't have numbing cream. People put on numbing cream before they get laser removal nowadays. I just raw dogged this entire experience. And it was awful. So, I mean, it was effective, to say the, the least. I only had three sessions and it was pretty much gone. Eventually, once I was over how awful the lasering experience was, I began liking more tattoo content on Instagram and just becoming more obsessed with tattoos like I was before. And eventually, I found Joseph Karam on Instagram and immediately I was like, this is the tattoo artist for me. I was like, I just knew it in my bones. When I saw his Instagram profile, it was like, this is the one. So Joseph is a tattoo artist in San Diego, California, and honestly, one of the most amazing people that I've ever met. Just such a kind and gentle human, but such an incredible artist at the same time. I'm so grateful for Joseph. I sent him this very, very long email about the removal and the sleeve and what I wanted. And I was like, please, please take this project on. I love your work. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. So I began traveling down to San Diego to get tattooed by Joseph. Yeah, his work is just so good. He used to work at Guru Tattoo in Pacific Beach, but he has since left and I think he's at his own studio now. Initially, I was traveling down to San Diego to get tattooed by him. And then actually when I was down there, I got a job in San Diego. So I fully just moved down to San Diego. I got more and more sessions done by Joseph. It was such a life-changing experience after going through the removal and feeling really bad about myself and tattoos in general to then having this sleeve that I'm obsessed with. And I feel really happy and proud to have. Just like that experience was so rewarding for me. So I just kept getting more and more and more, more sessions until I have what I have now. And many of you will know that this sleeve is not done yet. And I want to go back to Joseph to get him to extend it onto my hand. I think I want to get a little peony bud right here. 
and then I'm gonna have him continue with the rest of the sleeve. But for a while, I was just like a little bit unsure what I wanted to do color-wise. So I was like, let's just take a pause. Like I'm happy with where it's at. Let's just pause and I'll continue it later. And then here's when we get into a point of like, I get tattooed a lot from now on. And like I said, before I was living in San Diego, I eventually moved back up to Santa Cruz to live with my grandma for a little bit, kind of during like the start of the pandemic. And then in the middle of the pandemic, I moved to LA. And this is when the like heavy tattooing started. And my next tattoo was my moth on my arm. I first heard about Idle Hand through, I think, a friend of a friend who had gone there. And Idle Hands is such an incredible tattoo studio in San Francisco. If you are in that area, I would absolutely recommend going there. I decided that I wanted to get tattooed by Derek. I just really love Derek's work. He does super, super bold, black, American traditional work. He's an incredible artist. And I saw he did a bunch of moths. So I was like, that's what I want. At this point, I was still insane about sending my tattoo artist insane emails. So I sent him this crazy email of like a post-it note that I measured and like references of my body where I wanted the tattoo. And Derek did it, he did an amazing job. And yeah, I love my moths, one of my favorite tattoos for sure. I wanted to get two daggers on my calves. So I researched, researched, researched for a really long time online and I found Gina Serpentina. And I'm so glad I found her on Instagram because she's now just such a dear and incredible friend of mine. And I just found her on Instagram and was like, I'm getting tattooed by her. So I got this pair of daggers by Gina. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just like, hey, I want a dagger with a rose and a dagger with a skull. And then you can just go for it. Like, just do it. And I had such an amazing experience. I think she was actually the first woman I got tattooed by. Not that getting tattooed by men is bad, but the experience I had with Gina was so incredible. Gina has just such incredible energy. I'm so happy to have met her and got these tattoos by her. So we did an outline of the shins and then we got them colored in. Super traditional, which is what I love. Here I have a photo of them colored in, but it's from my Instagram story where I was already planning for my knee to be covered. So I had that in the back of my head, but my next tattoo was the tattoo in the center of my chest. So many people compliment me on this tattoo. I think this is like everyone else's favorite tattoo of mine. I love this tattoo, but I get the most amount of compliments on it. Maybe it's because it's so like central to my body. And like when you see me, you see this pretty much immediately. So I was following this ornamental tattoo artist on Instagram. Her at is nani.tattoo. And all of a sudden she posted that she was doing a guest spot in LA. And I was like, oh my God, like I should get a tattoo by her. So I saw her flash, picked one, decided I was going to get it in the center of my chest. And we just got it done like a week later. Yeah, it was just kind of like a very spur of the moment decision on my part. It's not like I had this planned for very long. But I love this tattoo. It's incredible. After I got this tattoo, I went back to Gina to get my leg done. Initially, I just wanted my knee covered, but then we had this whole snake wrapping around the knee with the peonies, and it just turned into like a large, large portion of my knee. And Gina, she stenciled on the peonies, but then she drew the body of the snake on. And I remember just sitting in her tattoo shop. I was actually standing on a chair and she was drawing on me, I want to say for like an hour. And I was just like in awe of this. At this point, I think I had already told her that I wanted to become a tattoo artist. So just like experiencing getting tattooed by her, she was in her new studio. I have a whole video on this experience as well. If you would like to view it, it will be linked right now. This was definitely the most painful tattoo I've ever gotten. Over the kneecap, I felt like I was gonna die, genuinely. But yeah, I mean, I'm literally in love with it. One of my favorite tattoos. I feel like I'm gonna say that about every tattoo, that it's one of my favorites, cause like they're all my favorites. At some point after this, I got my ears tattooed and I just have two little tiny lines on both of my ears. I got these ear tattoos from Yasa Tattoo, who has also become such an incredible friend of mine. I first found Yasa on TikTok and she posted her permanent makeup. I just became obsessed with her work and I was like, oh, I want to go get tattooed by her, talk to her. So I just got these tiny little tattoos by her. I really love them. They're just cute little ear ornaments. Sometimes I get comments on them. People are like, oh, you have like tattoos there. I'm like, yeah, I do. Sometimes I forget about it. 
but yeah, I love these. They're cute. Um, I kind of just got them for the experience. Again, this, this wasn't like a huge thought process that went into this. Ever since moving to LA and getting started at the tattoo shop, I've had the opportunity to get to know so many incredible people in this industry. Yeah, I'm just so grateful every day for the people that I meet and how kind and generous they are with their time and their knowledge. And yeah, just sitting down and talking to these people about their lives is like my absolute favorite thing in the entire world. So at this point, I wanted another moth. And for a while, I've been wanting one on my sternum. I think I even made a TikTok a long time ago. Like, pick my next tattoo for me. TikTok picks my next for tattoo for me. So I decided to go back to Derek to get my moth sternum. I visited him in San Francisco, I think it was like almost a year ago. Because I remember it was right before the new year. So I went to get tattooed by Derek again, and at this session, I told him I wanted to become a tattoo artist. And similarly, he just gave me so much great advice. And he actually gifted me a flash book that he made with his friends. And this was just such an incredible gesture to me because it was like, I was just being met with so much kindness and so much like welcoming from the tattoo community that I really didn't expect. But yeah, I've just been so grateful for all of the support that I've gotten from all of these people. And that's why when people tell you like how to become a tattoo artist, a lot of people will tell you just like go get tattooed by people you admire because then you end up making these connections with people and they want to help you out. That's been my experience, so I've just been, like I said, so incredibly grateful and blessed. I was really nervous for this tattoo because I thought it was going to hurt way more than it was than it did hurt. Because I was like, I've heard so many bad things about the sternum area, but it was totally fine. Like, it didn't hurt that bad. And Derek is super fast. I think this only took like an hour and a half. He's a star. After my sternum moth, I got this tattoo at the shop by Ash Grimm. And this is an important tattoo because it's actually the first tattoo I got at Timeless Tattoo where I work. Ash works at the shop. She's just such an incredible artist and she really does inspire me so much every day. She's a bit younger than me and she's just accomplished so much. So yeah, I'm just, I'm so inspired by her every day. She creates amazing art and yeah, I told her I wanted a sacred heart and she absolutely smashed it. This one didn't hurt, it's on the outside of the arm, I mean. But yeah, I really do love this tattoo. So good, and it fits this area really nicely. The next tattoos I got, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get some visible tattoos because I want them. And I found Emily on TikTok, I think. And Emily works at this studio called Strange Love in LA. And I've always really admired Strange Love, the studio. A lot of their artists do really similar stuff to Idle Hands in San Francisco. They all do like pretty heavy black traditional work. But I went and got this snake by Emily and she freehanded the snake on me. She did such an incredible job. I really love how she designs and draws her snake, especially like the scales. And at that same time, she did both of these words on my neck. And the words I got are create and light. Create and light individually are really special to me. And then create light together is also just really special to me. For me, that's always just kind of been like an important idea to not just like be a certain way, but like to create the way that you live, if that makes sense. But yeah, I really love these tattoos. And they're, they're small, didn't hurt. I mean, it, it was like a small needle and it was really fast. After that, I had Ash add a spider to my hand. And for me, my hand is kind of all about like protection with the snake and the spider. I might add something over here that has something to do with that as well. I kind of like my tattoos to have like an idea more than a meaning, but I love my spider. I love how dark it is. It's like one of my favorite tattoos, like they all are. So those are all of the professional tattoos that I have. I let my friends do some stick and pokes. I let my brother do a stick and poke on my leg. I did my own stick and poke a little, by, a little while ago. They're all just really shitty and bad, but it's not really about like how good they are. But like I said in the beginning, I also have a few tattoos planned. So I'm going back to Derek again. He's going to do two panthers on the side of my stomach. And I know that one's going to hurt. I know it's going to hurt really bad. 
And then later on this year, I have an appointment to get tattooed by Aaron Garcia, who works at 8th Floor LA. Incredible, incredible, heavy black work. I'm getting a vase on my inner forearm right here. I sent Aaron a bunch of photos of some vases that were at my grandma's house. My grandma, unfortunately, passed away recently. So I thought I would get a really nice tribute to her on my forearm. Her name was Violet, so we're gonna have some violets in the vase as well. So I'm so excited for that tattoo. I'll probably make a whole video about it, but that's not until August. So we have some time until that one. And then I have like a million tattoos in my head that I just haven't contacted anyone about yet, but I'm sure I will soon. So yeah, that is all of the tattoos I have. That is all of the tattoos I have planned to get right now. I love tattoos so much and I love tattoo culture and I love talking about tattoos and I love sharing everything I know about tattoos with you guys. I am just so happy and so excited for what the future holds because I'm getting closer to becoming a tattoo artist myself and just this whole experience has been so amazing so far. I can't imagine what the next three years are going to look like. So yeah, I'm just really, I'm so excited. I'm so grateful for every single one of you who watches my videos, who comments on my videos. I'm just, my heart is so full of the community that we've kind of built here of like people who really, really love and are really passionate about tattoos. So thank you for watching. Thank you if you, if this is your first video, thank you for watching this one. If you've watched a few, thank you for watching them. If you watched all my videos, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If there's anything else you guys want to see from me, as always, you can leave it in the comments down below. I have a lot of really fun and cool content planned for this year for you all that I think you will really enjoy. But that's all I have for this video. Like I said, thank you for watching. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you have, leave me this emoji in the comments so that I know that you are a real one. Bye everyone. Thank you.